Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me for a, uh, another review of a pen that I bought on eBay from China. A number of my viewers have talked about how they've bought a lot of pens because they've seen my videos. So I also buy pens based on the comments that my viewers leave me. And this was one of them. I'd seen this pen. I wasn't really motivated, but then a viewer said you should give it a shot. So here we go. Nice plastic case, good storage case, functional. You open it up and there's the pen and there's also a syringe, which is what this pen is known for because it's sold as an eyedropper and only an eyedropper. When you take the syringe out of this package, you notice one interesting thing. This is a real medical syringe. When you take a look at the end of that, I mean, that's sharp. That's something that could easily penetrate skin. So you got to be very, very careful with this syringe. Unlike this syringe from Goulet Pens, which works very, very well. And this uh, syringe I bought on eBay. I got like five of them for five bucks and they have different tips on them, three different tips and they're all blunt and that's really the key. But what's really nice is the pen. Uh, machined acrylic. Lakai I think is the name and the eBay auction that I used, we'll see it here, did not mention the brand. So it is all clear. Unscrew cap. And we see the section. It's kind of frosted. But the feed is clear. Looks like a standard number five nib, and this one is medium. So this just unscrews. And we're going to be doing silicone grease. As you see, there's a nice O ring there, which is always good to maintain the ink and keep it inside of the barrel. The other thing that's nice about this is the nib unscrews. It's a nib assembly. And that also has an O-ring on it. In fact, that is the only O-ring. It was looked like there may have been another one from the view, but it's not. No branding on the pen at all. As you can see, that O-ring's a little loose, so in order to keep it, you got to be careful when you reinsert the nib and feed. Tightens up very nicely. So one of the things that you might say when you look at this pen, yeah, I think that cap, the barrel and section are going to seal up pretty nicely. You might say that that looks familiar. And you are right. So let's take a look and... I happen to have the pen that it looks familiar to. And that's the Franklin Christoph Pocket 66. The dimensions are very, very close. Uh, this has a much larger unfinished end here, you know, so there's less material there. So this doesn't fill with as much ink when you do the fill. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, you got your classic Frank and Christoph threads at the end of the section, which is nice. I mean, this pen's been a workhorse. It's been filled a number of times. Uh, I put a black nib in it, which I think really looks nice in this pen. It's a nice number six nib, which also distinguishes it from this imitator. So, to me... It's just kind of like flattery. It's not really even a mimic or an imitator. It's just a, an interesting design pen from day one to be uh, eyedropper fill with a syringe and they give you a syringe, but you must be careful because it's a medical syringe. So let's see what ink we want to put in here. 
and let's see how this writes with the nib that's there. And since it's a number five, in theory, we should be able to replace it with other number fives, and we'll see if that makes sense as we go through this review. Well, here's an ink that I got in my nice little order from Ink Art. I haven't put this in a pen yet, and this might look interesting in this clear demonstrator pen. Take the cap off. It's a pretty intense blue, which is nice. We'll take the pen apart. And I'm going to go off camera and ink up the threads. Uh, sorry, put some silicone grease on those threads. Syringe that came with it. Even I'm a little concerned about how sharp that is at the end. So we have about three milliliters of ink in here, which I think should do a good job in this pen. That's about as comfortable of a fill that I'm willing to do now. And as I mentioned, now I have silicone grease on these threads. I think it's a very nice tight fit. I think they did a good job in the design without the silicone grease, but there's no reason not to be safe. It tightens up well. So now we're just going to do a wipe in case there's a little, little grease on the outside of those threads. We don't want to get anything. So now we're going to see how that ink is going to penetrate. Wow, that's pretty fast. I'm impressed. So it's filling up the clear section. So generally, to me, it generally takes a few minutes. And I know some of the people mentioned there's ways of, uh, in, you know, increasing this by screwing it in and, you know, letting the pressure push the ink through there. But we're going to set this aside before we do any writing. I think this syringe will work fine with that needle point taken off. You know, it might be hard to get ink out of certain bottles, but uh, with that small diameter it should fit and it uh, certainly can draw up ink very easily. So here's my coloring card on the uh, frankly blue and frankly it's blue. So this is put on with a q-tip, this is put on with a scalpel, you know really thick kind of layering it on like paint and I do some smears and I've also done a chromatography which is quite interesting. Obviously there's that fringe of blue at the very top, but there's also some light green and some pink in there. Some sheen, you can see that red sheen there, but that was laying down a glob of ink with an eyedropper and just letting it dry. Not what you're going to get writing with the pen normally. I've now used the pen for a couple of days. It's knocked around in my pocket in my briefcase, been exposed to little heat, not any cold, not in this weather, but I have to say that the pen held up very nicely. The machine of the acrylic is, is just an interesting material for a pen, you know, with the matching large areas at the top and the bottom, the cap and the barrel, the very clear section that shows the nib, and that transparent feed shows off the color of the ink well. So you notice there's just a little bit of ink there and there's some uh, water condensed inside the cap. The nib doesn't dry out. Obviously with that type of moisture it's not going to dry out. Not really certain where the water is coming from. I never really have seen that before on another pen. You know, I've, I've been writing with this. It writes first time every time. It's consistent, and I've written a number of pages with it, uh, a couple pages of letters and stuff. So I'm extremely happy with the function of this pen. Um, it's a great size for a pocket pen, a little bit larger than some of the more popular ones like the Caveco Sport, but I just enjoy the design, and it does, you know, make one reminisce of a certain Franklin Christoph model, but... They've also done some interesting pieces like this 
frosted section which matches the section on the pen and it's very clear here where the nib is so it really does show off the nib well that frosted section corresponds to the frosted section of the section you know um, so that's a, a nice unique attribute uh, there's never been any leakage you know I did my normal uh, silicone grease you know you can use this pen unposted it is it is long enough which is nice from a pocket pen but considering this cap is very light and you don't want it rolling away it, it's easy to just post it so overall I like this pen um, and I enjoy writing with it I enjoy carrying it around um, <clears throat> this is certainly going to be one of my uh, more popular pocket pens that I have in uh, my collection you never know maybe it might become one of yours joy about finding out about a pen is the little things that they've done to make it functional and when I was cleaning out the cap I noticed that frosted area has been machined out so that really creates an inner cap seal there so the end of the section presses up against that ledge and that gives you a very small amount of air and area which that pen is gonna that nib is gonna be in and that's one of the things that makes a pen not dry out I mean that's the whole concept with the slip and seal where you have a very small area that's attached or presses up against the section and makes certain that the nib stays wet and that certainly works that way in this pen I cleaned it out and I noticed that ledge when I was using my paper towel to clean it out. A pocket pen. So one of the things that's nice about it is it does fit in a hand without posting. It might be a little short for some people, but it posts deeply and securely and it makes for a very nice pen in the hand. doesn't change the balance. So enough about the pen let's talk about how the nib lays down some ink it does a nice job as you saw from the chromatography and some of the other stuff, this is a nice blue, but it's not a super, super saturated blue. So that lays down a nice patch of ink. You can see those two swipes, so how it dries pretty quickly on this paper. And it also shows to be maybe a little bit of feathering there, probably because I pressed a little bit too much and, you know, cut into the paper. So it's not a soft nib, but it is smooth as you can hear and it, it feels good on the paper so I think this is a great knock around pen I think it, it is very attractive the ink uh, certainly does show the color through in that transparent feed um, interesting how the frost the section is frosted but you know, also that bottom of the barrel is uh, a little frosted. So it's interesting what they've done. There's a good deal of ink in here, so it's going to last a while. So I give this pen a thumbs up. I'm not going to try to draw it. This is the medium nib compare to this Franklin Kristoff extra fine and I think you you can see immediately that that is definitely a wider line and the uh, Franklin Kristoff is definitely on the fine side of, of fine this nib has a little bit of feedback to it which is what you would expect with an extra fine nib but it is a pleasure to hold. It fits well in the hand. Definitely right with it posted. And that green 
transparent color is definitely uh, very interesting and very intriguing and that nib design is excellent. So this is not a substitute for the Franklin Kristoff. It's something to supplement if you want to do some different types of uh, pocket pens that you want to carry around. So that's how I would put them in perspective. So thank you for watching. I hope you have many great ink, pen, and paper experiences. Explore the wonderful world and the variety that the world has, pens included. Enjoy every day, and then you'll enjoy your life. Till the next video, see you later. Bye.